To find out why, I sat down with Poonam Chuhan Pol, the World Bank's lead Africa economist and author of the twice yearly Africa Pulse Report. A lot of it is being driven by the two largest economies, Nigeria and South Africa, performing poorly um, along with Angola. And yes, we have our oil exporters that are not uh, growing at, at the rates that they had in the past, uh, being weighed down by low, com low uh, commodity prices. However, I think it's important to bear in mind that there are still several countries, we have 12 uh, in, in the pulse, um, which are showing a fair amount of resilience. That's about a quarter of, of countries in the region. For example, countries like Rwanda, Tanzania, Ethiopia are continuing to grow at growth rates of, of, of over 6%. And there are other countries like Cote d'Ivoire and Senegal that are actually, um, you know, have, have improved performance and are now in the top performing countries uh, in the region. Looking ahead to next year, we're seeing the picture improve somewhat with 2.9% growth, 3.6% in 2018. Why the sunnier outlook? We expect the global economy to strengthen moving forward. Uh, uh, we expect commodity prices to stabilize, uh, which will mean, um, you know, and rise slightly. So this, this uh, will improve export earnings for the commodity exporters and in turn uh, revenues, um, you know, on, for, for the government. Now the Africa Pulse report, as you say, could be seen as a tale of two continents. Those countries you mentioned that have been more resilient what have they been doing right? We find that these countries tend to have better policies uh, in terms of macroeconomic policies are better. These countries also show more export diversification so that they have, you know, diversified their exports. They also tend to have better uh, business regulatory environment. I'll give an example of how countries have diversified. For example, Cote d'Ivoire. It's the largest producer of cocoa. Um, but it's slowly moving into processed cocoa, and so now it's exporting chocolates and cocoa paste and cocoa butter. Countries like Nigeria are very reliant on oil, very vulnerable to fluctuations in oil prices. What can they do to diversify their economies? I think it's very important for countries to take this as an opportunity to uh, undertake structural reforms that would bring in investment, that would uh, uh, reduce some of the constraints to business, uh, including in, in infrastructure, especially in, in um, you know, the power sector, uh, but also in, in terms of transport networks. Let's talk about the importance of agriculture. What more could be done to change the way farming is done in sub-Saharan Africa? This is a great time for African countries to be thinking about improving the performance of agriculture. And actually for Africa to industrialize, it has to go through agricultural transformation. The conditions are right on the, on the demand side. Um, urbanization and uh, you know, growing populations as well as rising incomes are creating a huge demand for food. We think that investment in um, agriculture and rural uh, public goods in terms of connecting farmers to markets, in terms of irrigation, in terms of, you know, uh, better techniques of production, uh, bringing, bringing more uh, of these techniques to farmers would really go a long way. Now, China has played a very big role in Africa for many years with significant investment in infrastructure projects, for example. Now that China's economy is shifting to a different model and becoming less reliant on resources that it has been able to buy from Africa, how is that relationship changing, and is China still seen as a reliable partner? I think China is uh, a very important partner for Africa, and its, its importance has increased. Uh, it's the largest uh, export market of, for, for the region. Um, and also um, ties with China in terms of financial ties are deepening investment. China is investing in, in Africa. Um, we also think that there is considerable scope for, for Africa to learn from, uh, you know, the things that China has done well. So, you know, knowledge exchange is really important, know-how, how to do things. Um, China has had considerable success. Uh, you know, in, in, in terms of reducing poverty and industrializing. So it can bring a lot to, uh, to inform um, uh, Africa's uh, growth, growth and development. And so we see that as a very important aspect of the overall relationship. Uh, China's recent rebalancing also creates uh, opportunities for Africa to look for, um, you know, exports to uh, new new kinds of exports to uh, to Africa, uh, to China. Sorry, that are more consumer based. Uh, for example, chocolates, uh, you know, or, or or coffee and and fruits. 
Um, so I think this relationship is, is, uh, has uh, great potential to grow.